And Jenny said a cat draws a breath from a sleeping child. Oh, and Jenny talks too much. Papa, please, we get to the account book now and the money. I'm ready, Mama. It sure looks like a lot of money when they pay you in silver dollars. It's not a lot, not the way Papa works. First for the landlord, Mama. Now for the landlord. For the landlord. Next for the grocer. For the grocer. For the grocer. Money for shoes this week, Mama. Catherine's shoes to be half sold. For Catherine's shoes? Teacher says I need a new notebook, Mama. Yeah, how much it will be? A dime. For the notebook, then. Here, you don't lose it, Christine. I'll keep it in my handkerchief, Mama. Yeah, you, you, you watch out now when you blow your nose. Is all, Mama? Yeah. Yeah, it's all for this week. It's good. We do not have to go to the bank. Yeah, it's good. We did not live entirely by ourselves in our house in Larkin Street. To help with expenses, Mama took in a boarder. His name was Mr. Hyde. He was an Englishman, an actor. Mr. Hyde never paid his rent, but he spoke so beautifully. And his manners were so elegant. Once a week after supper dishes, he would join the family around the kitchen table and read aloud to us from one of his books. Okay, here, Nils. Mr. Hyde is going to... from two city children. Tonight, Mr. Hyde says he finishes the story, maybe. Such a beautiful story. But sad. I like sad stories. If we are all ready, Mrs. Henson? Yeah, Mr. Hyde. We are ready. Thank you. In the black prison of the conciergerie, the doomed of the day awaited their fate. They were in number as the weeks of the year. Fifty-two were to roll that afternoon on the life side of the city to the boundless everlasting. It was almost midnight when Mr. Hyde came to the end, but none of us had noticed the time. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest I go to than I have ever known. The end. Yeah, yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> the more stories Mr. Hyde read to us, the more I realized the one thing I wanted in all the world was to become a writer. I did write a story once about Uncle Chris, but our teacher said it wasn't nice to write like that about a member of one's family. Once or twice a year, Uncle Chris, with his great loud voice and his stiff black mustache, would roar down from his ranch and descend upon us in his automobile. Martha! Lost! Silver! Hey! Nobody home? Uh, uh. I say there's nobody home. What is it? You do not hear me calling? I do not call loud enough? Christine! Hiding behind the house? Christine! Which, yes, yes, you do not hear me, yes, I do not call out enough. Katrina, Nils, is the game, yeah? Come here, come all of you. We're, we're glad to see you, Uncle Chris. Well, well, well. Yes, Uncle Chris. Well, then why you do not come? You stand up tall, Nils. Friend tall. Yes, Uncle Chris. Now, let me see. Two inches. Two inches you grow in six months? It's good! Good! Christina, show me your teeth. Yes, Uncle Chris. You brush them good, yes? All right, I'll go into the house. Katrina, wait for the one, Dagma. She still try to hide from me? She's sick, Uncle Chris. Sick? It, it's her ear. She has an earache. Mama sent for the doctor. Good doctor? What do he say? He's in the house now. He, he's looking at Dagmar's ear right now. Marasa, where's doctor? Where's Dagmar? Uncle Chris. How is with little one? It's not good, Uncle Chris. Catherine, Christine. Yes, Mama. I want you should both stay in the house. Well, uh, what, 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 what does the doctor say? He's good, doctor. She's coming now, Uncle Chris. We must get her to a hospital. But what, Mrs. Hanson? Well, well, what is with the child, huh? It's operation. I, I'm afraid so. Yes, doctor. We go. But what is with the child? It's a master. Oh, well, then you operate. I believe that's what I said. Immediately. Dr. Janssen, I have this money, doctor. It's enough. If there isn't, we, we can go to the bank. We have a bank account. Listen, if there is need of money, I pay. Hey, don't worry. We'll take Dagmar to the clinic. Good, good. I have patients there already. My nephew, Arne. Pardon? The Greek boy in hospital? He operated this morning on his knee. 
Should have been done long ago. Well, if you have Dagmar at the clinic in an hour's time... She will be at the clinic in ten minutes' time. I have automobile. I can hardly make arrangements in ten minutes. But then I make arrangements. I know, doctor. Uncle Chris, Dr. Janssen arranged. He's a good doctor. Thank you, madam. And don't worry. I'll do the operation myself. I watch. You will do no such thing, sir. Always I watch operations. I'm head of family. This morning, with many of you... I'll allow no one to attend my operation. But I'm so bad... I go see Dagmar, Martha. Uncle Chris, no, wait. It's kind of you, but no. You frighten her. I frighten her? Yeah, Uncle Chris, you frighten everyone. I such a nice man. I frighten everyone. Everyone but me. Even Yenny, the great trainer, they are frightened of you. Uh, the aunt, women. And the children, too. So you drive to the hospital in your automobile, but you do not frighten Dagmar. Yes, come. Come, get Dagmar. Katrina. Christine. Yes, Uncle Chris. It's true? I frighten you? I tell you, you're frightened of me? Yes, Uncle Chris. Oh, no. And you, Katrina? A, a little, Uncle Chris. But why? I'm your Uncle Chris. Why do I frighten you? Bad, very bad. The aunts, yes, I like to frighten them. Yes, yeah, baby. <laughs> Does that make you laugh? Huh? You do not like them, huh? Now, come, tell me. Not very much, Uncle Chris. And which do you not like the most, huh? Yenny, Sigrid, maybe Trina? Huh? Come tell me. I, I think I like her at Jenny the least. She's so bossy. I can't stand that Sigrid. Always whining and complaining. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Sigrid whining. Yenny bossy, too, too. <laughs> Please, I must talk to you. Now, right away. Yes, Sigrid. You kidnapped my boy to the hospital. Yeah, I take him. I wait till you go marketing, then I take my nephew to hospital. This me will get better without operations. And the step. Dagmar must go to the hospital, too. So go home. You are cluttering up the house. Dagmar? Hospital? He's sending all the children to the hospital. Martha! Oh, there is Martha. I must warn her. Mama knows, Aunt Jenny. Dagmar's awful sick. Oh, this is some more of his doings. Sigrid, you're a whining old fool. Will you get out of here? Stay where you are, Sigrid. And you, Yanny, you're a bossy old fool, and you get out of here, too. We're ready, Uncle Chris. I've got Dagmar. You got that good news? Yes, Uncle Chris. Well, then go. Take her out to automobile. Oh, that man. That awful man. Martha, did he tell you what he did to my poor Arnold? Hospital. Operation. Yeah, Sigrid, I know how you must feel, but excuse me. No, we are taking Dagmar to hospital, too. You come with us in the automobile. Sigrid and I will go to the hospital in a streetcar. Catherine, you and Christine be good children till Mama comes home. Yes, Mama. There Martha! Is... Yeah, yeah, I come. Come! There is milk in the cooler, Catherine, and fruit and cookies for your lunch. I go now. No, you can't go. Not with that man. What? Not in his automobile. Why not? Didn't you see? She is in automobile, too. That woman from his ranch. She even brings her when he comes to visit family. Yeah, his housekeeper. In front of the children, even, he brings her. So it will kill me to sit in automobile with her. I have seen her. She looks nice, woman. Yeah, I come back, girls. I come back soon I can. What did you find out, Uncle Chris? Dagmar, how is she? I find out nothing. Nurses, doctors. Well, wait. They tell me. Wait here in the lobby. And Mama? Well, Mama can wait upstairs. And head of the family wait in the lobby. But I don't worry, Nils. Dagmar will be all right. Just like Arne. You have seen him? They let you see Arne? I see Arne. Operation big success, like I say. Oh, my boy. My Arne. They won't let me see him. See, Kate, you don't understand English. No visitors for 24 hours. But you have seen him? I'm no visitor. I'm exception. I will see doctor. I've seen doctor. I told him you're not good for him. Not good for my own son. No, no, not good at all. You cry over him. Please, Mr. Halverson. Yes, yes, yes. Well, a doctor, a doctor needs me. No, he does not need you. And this is a hospital, so please stop shouting. Uh, hospital, 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 hospital. Oh, uh, Martha, Martha. You, you, you have news? No, not yet. I, I wait here for Dr. Janssen. Then Mrs. Janssen had her gallbladder taken out. She was six hours on the operating table. Hey, I do not want to hear about Mrs. Bairn. Uh, Martha, I go out for a while. I stop by house, yeah? See if kids are all right. Thanks, Uncle Chris. Uh, come back later. Yeah. 
Maybe Sigrid and I go next door and have some coffee. Uh, yeah, Yenny. You have money? No, I have the letter. Good. Then I treat you. Mama, can I do anything? Is there something you... Honest, just this waiting. Poor little Dogma. She was so... Mrs. Hanson? Doctor. Well, Dagmar's fine, Mrs. Hanson. She came so beautifully. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I go to her now. No. No, I'm afraid you can't. But you'll see her tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, but I promise her, Doctor. She will be frightened if I do not keep my promise. For the first 24 hours, clinic patients are not permitted to have visitors. The ward must be kept very quiet. Oh, but I would not make a sound. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hanson. Tomorrow. It's too long to wait. Tomorrow. And I promise her. What can I tell Papa tonight? Mommy, is that you? Is everything all right, Mama? The yeah, eye's all right. You ever eaten? Yes, Mama. I wish you wouldn't worry like this. What's the matter, Mama? I'm a dead margin. She's not. Not Mama. No, no. Down right fine. It's two hours till Papa comes home. Two hours. Now? They wouldn't let Mama see Dagmar. She's worried. Coming home on the streetcar, she kept talking to me in Norwegian. What are we going to do? Well, you don't have to make everything so dramatic. Can't you see that Mama's heart is breaking? People's cars don't actually break. Shh, they do, too. Only in books. Mama, what's the bucket for? You're going to scrub now? Scrub? Yeah. I scrubbed the floor. But you scrubbed the floor yesterday. I scrub it again. But, Mama... Comes a time when you've got to get down on your knees. Now, do you believe me? Mama, I wish you wouldn't do this. You must be tired. Comes a time when you've got to get down on your knees. Mama, what is it? Mama, you look so... I just think of something. I go back to hospital. Now, Mama? No, no. You come with me, Catherine. I think of something. keeping her promise to Dagmar after all. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Uncle Chris was back at the bedside of my cousin, Arne. Uncle Chris? Oh, it hurts, Uncle Chris. Maybe you feel better if I sing to you, Arne, huh? Listen, Arne. Good song. And a thousand sweets went through the wheat and a battle of Copenhagen. And a thousand sweets went through the wheat chasing one Norwegian. Good song, Arnie, huh? Yeah? Uncle Chris, does it have to hurt like this? It's, it's, it's very bad, Arnie. Yeah. Oh. Arnie, don't you know any swear words? What? Swear words. No, Uncle Chris. Not real ones. Well, then I teach you two fine ones. Good Norwegian swear words. When pain comes, you say... Don't hit Hmm? It has plenty on it. I know I have pain, too. I swear all the time. I beg your pardon. Nurse, what do you want? I have to change the bed linen. And I say it, but you said. Change bed linen and you hear some more. Arne. <laughs> Don't yell. Just like that. But only if it's pain, it's very bad. Yes, Uncle Chris. Would you like to sing some more? I don't uh, mind. But maybe something... A little quieter? Oh, uh, sure, sure. What are you doing? Drink whiskey. You want some? <laughs> you terrible man. Swear words and whiskey. I have a good mind to call the head nurse. Yeah, you call her. Maybe she likes it. <laughs> On the quiet zone. Quiet. Me left as love to long. Huh? He's good, Uncle Chris. He's good. Huh? Now, you try sleep, on him. Huh? Sleep. Yeah. The lobby was empty. 
day when Mama and I reached the hospital. Only a nurse at the admitting desk. She was busy writing, and Mama slipped past her before she even looked up. I saw Mama disappear down the corridor. Who? Who, me? You please, miss. No whistling in the hospital. Yes, ma'am. Just a minute. Wasn't someone with you just now? Where'd she go? I, I don't know. We were just happened to walk in together. I think maybe she works here. She was just... Good evening. Good evening. It's all right. I scrub floors now. Oh, you must be the new scrub lady. Floors need cleaning. They certainly do. Go right ahead. Stop wherever you want. Oh, thank you. It was many weeks before Mama ever spoke of how she found Dagmar that night. How she scrubbed floors till she discovered the right ward. And scrubbed again till she saw the lights dim and the nurse leave. Dagmar. Dagmar. It's Mama Dagmar. Mama. Where were you, Mama? You promised me. Yeah, yeah, I know I promised, sweetheart. If you come, I, I can sleep. It's no fever. It's good. But you sleep now, darling. Here, yeah, I bring you this. Your dolly. Dolly? Yeah, she goes to sleep with you, see? Sleep is so good. So good. The banners of even Uncle Elizabeth fights with Bulldog, Mama. Oh, no. Yeah, his last fight, I think. Oh, no. Elizabeth! Uncle Elizabeth! Mama, look what happened to him. Well, I think maybe he, he he's just kind of sick, Dogma. Sick? He, he looks awful. Oh, Dogma, sweetheart. Would it not be better for poor Uncle Elizabeth to go quietly to sleep? He, and he never wake up again? I think he will die anyway. Mama can make him well. Mama can do everything. Please make him well, Mama. Please. Let me see, me see. Let us see how he gets through tonight. Where's no. Nils? I want him I to... I sent Nils to drugstore, Marta. I uh, get something for Uncle Elizabeth. Uh, chloroform, maybe. Chloroform? Uh, it, it's best thing to do, Marta. Yeah, but such a sad homecoming for Dagmar. Mama! Mama! Yeah, Christine. We just saw Mr. Hyde on the street. We have suitcases, Mama. Suitcases? Mr. Hyde. He gave me this envelope, Mama. It's for you. Lars, it's check. Check to Mrs. Lars Hansen, $130. All of his back rent. Hey, let me see. Oh, it's wonderful. Now we pay doctor everything. And you can buy your new coat. Your warm coat. Yeah. Oh, but there will be no more reading. He said we could have his books, Mama. All of them. His books? For us? I've got it, Papa. Oh, Bob. Oh, Please, it's not so loud. And I saw Aunt Ginny, Mama. She's coming up the hill as fast as she can. So she comes. Lost. The chloroform. You know how? Me? No, I, I thought that you... Well, you don't stand there, Catherine. Here, here. You and Christine take down her tray. Now go, go, and don't spill it. I'm not uh, about the chloroform. Uh, if you hold a cat, maybe I... Me hold a cat? You hold a cat? No. Nobody holds the cat. I think if, if we get a big sponge and cover him over with a blanket... Martha, he paid you his rent? Mr. Hyde? Yeah, Nate. Yeah, sure, he pay rent. How? How did he pay his rent? A check? You run up the hill just to ask me this, Yenny. Sure, a check, yeah. I thought so. 
He was at Mr. Kruper's today having his lunch. And then he left. He asked Mr. Kruper to cash a check for $50. I'm so, so. So, your fine Mr. Hyde is a crook. Check is no good. Not even a bank account at the bank. You... You mean this check is no good, too? No good at all. I bet he owed you plenty, Martha. I said I bet he owed you plenty. Mr. Hyde owed us nothing. I tear up the check, see? Nothing. He paid with far, far better things than money. I bet it must have been a hundred dollars. More even. See, Annie, maybe you don't have things to do. I have. And what do you have to do that's so important? I have to chloroform a cat. Chloroform, see? Smell? Martha, look in my face, Martha. <laughs> The next morning, even before breakfast, poor little Dagmar was downstairs looking for her cat. Elizabeth? How is he, Mama? How is Elizabeth? Don't, don't stare so early. Is Uncle Elizabeth all better, Mama? Dagmar, there is something I must tell you, sweetheart. I want to see Uncle Elizabeth. <laughs> Dagmar! Oh, good morning, my darling Elizabeth. Are you still asleep? Sleep your old cat oh, kitty. Lars, do something. Tell her. But, Martha... Hey, what a funny smell. Just like a word in the hospital. Dagmar, put the cat down. Put him... Papa, his tail, hanging down from the blanket, his tail, it's moving. Dagmar, let me, let me see that cat. What's the matter, Mama? He's switching his tail just like he always does. Give him to me. Uncle Elizabeth, speak to me. Lars, <laughs> Lars, it's a miracle. I knew you'd make him well, Mama. But Dagmar, I, I didn't. Be Papa and I... Catching the nail. Thinking, Martha, you didn't give that cat enough chloroform. <laughs> you just give him a good night's sleep. But, Lars, we must tell her. It's not good to let her grow up believing I can fix everything. Maybe. Maybe best thing in the world for her to believe. Yeah, Martha, I know exactly how she feels. that the weeks and months went by too fast while we were growing up and learning. And then my graduation, the most important night of my life. Not only did I have a lead in our graduation play, but Mama and Papa gave me the present I'd set my heart on. I didn't have to go to that old strike meeting. Pop could only come and see me graduate. You don't care about anything. Only your new dresser set. Well, I was right, wasn't I? I knew you'd devil Mom into getting me that dresser set. I didn't devil her. I just showed it to her in Mr. Schiller's window. Yes, and made her go and sell her silver brooch her very own mother gave her. Her most prized possession. What? She sold her brooch so she'd have enough money to buy the dresser set. How else could she buy it? You know Papa's been out of work. But what do you care? You got your dresser set. I, I don't believe it. But I don't... Mom, about selling it... Well, you to... better believe it. I promise not to tell, but I don't care. I'm going home. I'm, I'm going back home and ask Papa. But you haven't got time to go home. Catherine! Catherine is true. Mama gave Mr. Schiller her brooch and he gave her dresser set. But, but she couldn't. She, she shouldn't. I, I Catherine, never meant... You wanted your present and Mama wanted your happiness even more than she wanted her brooch. But she loved it so. It was all she had of grandmother. Catherine, you have your play to act. Uh, you'll be late now. I don't want to act in the play now. But you must. A whole audience waiting for you. I don't care. You must care. Look, tonight you are not Catherine any longer. Tonight you are an actress. And an actress must act whatever she is feeling. So you stop your crying, Catherine, and act in play. All right, Papa. I'll go. Mama? Well, how was graduation? Where are the children? Kristen is putting Dalmer to bed. Nils and Catherine come home later, they say. Well, sit down. I have coffee already. Last... I'm worried about Catherine. She was not good in the play tonight. Was not like Catherine. Martha, after you leave, Catherine found out about your brooch. My brooch? But how? Who told her? I did, Mama. Christine, why? Why did you tell her? Because I hated the way she was acting about that old dresser set. So smug. It's no excuse. You make her unhappy. You make her not good in the play. Well, she make, made you unhappy giving up your brooch for herself. It's not for you to judge. I choose to give my brooch. Christine is the stubborn one. Hey, Mama, we're home. What happened at your meeting, Papa? We go back to work tomorrow morning. Gee, that's fine, isn't it, Mama? Yeah, it's good. Catherine. Here's your brooch, Mama. I'm sorry I was so bad in the play. Here. We, we went to Mr. Schiller's house. 
He didn't want to give the brooch back, but Catherine begged and begged. And the dresser said she'd give that back? Yes. It was awful hard for her to do, Mama. Nils is the kind one. Catherine! Catherine, come in here. Yes, Mama. The brooch. Here, you put this on, Catherine. No, it, it's yours. It's your graduation present. I put it on for you. There. Oh, where I always... I'll keep it forever. Christine should not have told you. I'm glad she did now. I am glad, too. Uh, Catherine, wait. Here. Also for you. For me? Coffee? Yeah, Catherine. Yeah. No, wait, wait. The milk pitcher. Lots of milk, Lars. For me? For our grown-up daughter. I can't drink it. I can't. I can't. Catherine is the dramatic one. Yeah. It's too bad. Her first cup of coffee and she doesn't drink it. You drink it, Lars. We do not want to waste it. And you, Martha, you are the practical one. Yeah, practical. Lars, I think... I think maybe the children turn out all right. Yeah? She is good. My cousin Arthur. When we reached the ranch, the woman who kept his house was out on the porch waiting for us. I could hear Uncle Chris calling to her as she led us into the house. Yes, dearie. The whiskey. Yes, dearie. There's some left in the box. Oh, Martha. I'm glad you've come. You give me drink. Uncle Chris, that will not help you now. Whiskey always helps. Now especially. Uncle Chris, I don't think you realize that... That I'm dying, yeah? Why else do I think you come here? Get out. Get out. I don't want you here. Very well. Sigrid, Trina, come. We'll wait on the porch. If he wants us. That is where I want you, on the porch. Oh, wait. There is Arne. Yes, Uncle Chris. Come here, Arne. How's your knee? It's fine, Uncle Chris. Don't hurt anymore, Arne? No, Uncle Chris. You don't say, don't eat anymore? No, sir. Not anymore. Hmm. Anne, it's no little swear word. Means in Norwegian, stupid old goat. <laughs> Anne, you walk us? Let me see. Walk around the room. Like this, Uncle Chris? Huh? Fast, fast. Yeah, it's good. Oh, Uncle Chris, Anne has always been so fond of you. I that. tell you all to get out now. Except Martha. Martha and Katrina. She and I have secrets. You remember, Katrina? Yes, Uncle Chris. Martha, give me a bottle. There on the table. No, Uncle Chris. Well, we can't wait for his left in the bottle. Who will drink it when I'm dead? Come give it to me. All right. One drink. Uh, uh, give me, give me. Uh, Martha? Yeah? You sell this ranch... Give money to Jesse. Jesse? Jesse Brown, my housekeeper. Now, why why do I call her that to you? She's my wife. For many years, my wife. Only I do not tell you as sisters. I play fine joke on that. Your Uncle Chris. Where is Jesse? I get her, Uncle Chris. Yeah. I'd like you both be here. Katrina, you talk to me. Mama, like me to drink coffee now? Yes, Uncle Chris. Good. You're not frightened of me now. No, Uncle Chris. So you will be right, huh? <laughs> One day, maybe, you write a story from Uncle Chris, if you remember. I'll remember. Yes, yes Uncle Chris. Ah, uh, I think best Katrina go now. Farewell, Katrina. Goodbye, Uncle Chris. You say Norwegian like I do? Father, Uncle Chris. Yes, see, this is my niece, Martha. Martha, this is Yesi, my wife, who has given me much happiness. I'm very glad to meet you. I am too, Martha. And now you give me one more drink. 
You have drank with me, both of you. Let me finish the bottle. Yeah, sure, Uncle Chris. No, no, no water yet. No. Last drink always without water. Norwegian custom. True. True. Give Martha a glass, yes. Thank you. Yes, he. He. He's gone, Martha. Far bell, Uncle Cliff. Here she comes. Here comes Martha. I was just telling Trina and Sidri, all this expense and fuss, waiting for a wicked old man to die of the DTs. No more waiting, Jenny. Uncle Chris is gone. Huh? Did he? Did he say anything about the will? There is no will. Well, then, that means, well, since we're his nearest... There is no money either, Jenny. How do you know? He told me, Sidri. And yes, he gave me this little book. It's an account of how he spent his money. Bills from a saloon. No, Jenny, no. Oh, I read it to you. You know how Uncle Chris was lame, how he walked always with limp. But his one thought, lame people. I read you the last page. Joseph Spinelli, four-year-old, tubercular left leg, $337.18. Walks now. Esther Jensen, nine-year, club foot, $217.50. Box now. Arna Sullivan. My own. Nine year. Fracture kneecap. $442.16. Yeah. Arna. It does not tell in the book the end about Arna. I like to write box now. Yeah. Or maybe even run. Yeah. So, it's finished. What's good? Yeah, was good. You may go in and see him now if you want. Oh, yes, see. Maybe you all never meet Uncle Chris' wife, Mrs. Halverson, my sister's. She's right. right. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Oh, how do you do? Yes, see. I am Yenny. I go in and wash the dishes. How's that? Thank you. Yes, see. You like to come to San Francisco for a little? I like to have you. We've got plenty of room. Thank you, Martha. Maybe I will. Catherine. Catherine, you come in and see him. See him? You mean... Yeah, I like you to see him, Catherine. He looks happy. I like you to know what that looks like. Then you're not frightened of it ever. Will... Will you come with me? Yeah, sure. I come. like everyone else, it assumed I would be a writer. Three years later, it was also assumed I would go to college. But then I realized how pointless it would be. But why not? Why not college? Because the only reason for my going was to be a writer. Well, I'm not going to be one. I see. One of your stories comes back again. The tenth rejection. And it's the best story I've ever written. Oh, Papa, you talk some sense to her, please. Oh, Catherine has sense, Mama. Oh, by the way, Catherine, I used to read an article in newspaper. Here it says, um, yeah, it says... Woman writer tells key to literary success. See? Good picture, too. What woman writer? Oh, very fat lady, uh, Florence Dana Moorhead. Did you ever hear of her? Yes, of course. Everyone has. She's terribly successful. Here, Catherine, you'll read it. Florence Dana Moorhead, celebrated novelist, blah, 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 blah. Interview today in a suite at the Fairmont Hotel. Pronounced sincerity, the essential quality for success as a writer. A lot of help that is. But maybe if you send your story to this lady, she could tell you what's wrong with them. Oh, Mama, don't be silly. You seem to think that writing's like, well, like cooking or something. That all you need is a recipe. You have to have the gift for it. But what else does she say? Uh, apart from literature, Mrs. Morton in life is gas... gas... gastronomy. Gastronomy? The star? I, uh, I think it is to do with uh, eating, Mama. Oh. Oh. Last, um, I go downtown for a little while. I get material for new dress for Dogmore, maybe. And, and uh, maybe uh, stop by the Fairmont Hotel, maybe? The Fairmont Hotel? You must. You tell me by what street is Fairmont Hotel. <laughs> I never read 
read unpublished stories. So far as your daughter is concerned, I'll talk to you for one, two minutes, Miss Morgan. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I wish the newspaper had never printed that interview. The paper said you like to collect recipes for eating. Well, yes. Yes, I do. Well, I, too, am interested in gastronomy. I'm a good cook. Oh? I have special recipe for chot bowler. My mother gives me. She was the best cook I ever knew. Chot bowler, hmm? Never have I told this recipe to anyone. But if you let me talk to you, I tell it to you. Your daughter, hmm? She wants to write, you say? Yeah, I bring her stories. Here, Miss Moorhead, I bring 12 of them. 12? Well, if you could read maybe just one to know if someone is good cook, you do not need to eat whole dinner, yeah? You're very persuasive. Now, uh, how about the short baller? Well, when you make the meatballs, you drop them in boiling stock, not water. Oh? That is one of the secrets. Aha! And the cream sauce is another secret. Is half sour cream added at the last part. That sounds marvelous. Uh, look, why don't you come up to my room? Perhaps you'd uh, write the recipe out for me? Well, maybe we make bargain, Miss Moorhead. While I write the recipe, you'll read Catherine's story. You win, my girl. Come on. You did what, Mama? You, you brought her my story? Florence Dana Moorhead? Yeah, she reads five of them, Catherine. I was two hours with her. We have glass of sherry. We have two glasses of sherry. Mama, what did she say about them? She say they are not good. Well, I know that. I know they're just... But she say more. Will you listen, Captain? She say you write now only because of what you have read in other books. She say you must write about things you know. And then you have written story that is real and true. You send it to someone whose name she gives me. It's her agent. Here, I write it down. No, no, it's recipe for goulash as her grandmother make it. <laughs> now, here, his name and address. But, Mama, I haven't been anywhere or seen anything. Well, you could write about San Francisco, maybe. Or even better, about Papa. Papa? Papa is fine man. He's wonderful man. Yes, I know, but... Then I, I go fix supper. Catherine, I like you should write about Papa. <laughs> Captain, what will you do with so much money? I don't know. I'll buy Mama a warm coat. I know that. Coats don't cost five hundred dollars. I know. We'll put the rest in the bank. Will you, Mama? Put it in the bank tomorrow. Mama, what is it? I do not know how. Well, well, Mama, you just give it to the man like you always do. Martha, I, uh, I think you better tell them. Tell us what? Christine, Catherine, it's no bank account. Never in my life have I been inside a bank. But, but, but you always told me, you always said... Yeah, yeah, I know, but I tell lies. But why, Mama? Why did you pretend? It's not good for little ones to be afraid, to not feel secure. But now with $500, I think I can tell. Mama. Christine, you find Nielsen Dagmar and tell him to come here. And Catherine, you go get your story. Now? Yeah, now. Always here, you read it. Uh -huh. All sit down and listen. Catherine reads it to us. Now, what is it called, the story? It's called Mama and the Hospital. It's called who? You were right about Mama. But yes, it's I good, good. good. Catherine, I tell Mama, you, I tried, but it, it just didn't work out. But I tell you, Mama, I tried. It's Papa. Ready? Yeah, 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 we are ready. Catherine, for as long as I could remember, the house on the Larkin Street Hill had been home. Papa and Mama were both born in Norway. But they came to San Francisco because Mama's sisters were here. All of us were born here. My brother, Nell, my sister, Christine, and a little sister, Dagmar. It's true. All born in this house. When I look back, 1910 seems like only yesterday. I remember Mr. Hyde, the boarder, and Mama's sisters and my Uncle Chris. But first and foremost, I remember Mama. I remember how every Saturday night, Mama would call the family together. She'd sit down at the kitchen table and count out the money that Papa had brought home. For the landlord, Mama would say. For the grocer. At last, Papa would ask. Is old? And Mama would look up then and smile. Is good, she'd murmur. You do not have to go to the bank. I'm sure we'll 
will always remember, I remember Mama, and the three stars who made this evening such a success. Here they are, Irene Dunn, Barbara Bel Geddes, and Oscar Homoka. Irene, after that wonderful performance, I'll probably always think of you as Mama. Ah, it's good to be back, Bill. <laughs> And I hear there'll be another proof of your versatility next Saturday. What's happening Saturday, Irene? I'm joining the circus. You don't think... You don't think pictures are here to stay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for one day, Oscar. When the big circus comes to town this year, the first performance is for the benefit of St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. And a lot of Hollywood people will take part. I'll be there with a bottle of pop in one hand and a bag of peanuts in the other. What do you do, Irene? Ride a horse bareback, standing up? Oh, well, not exactly, Bill. It's eight horses. You ride eight horses? No, no, I didn't mean... I ride in a carriage, and they pull it. <laughs> Oscar, I hope you're traveling by something faster than horse and carriage when you go back to New York. <laughs> oh, yes, Bill. I'm traveling back this week. We start rehearsal soon for the new Kaufman and Fervor play, Bravo. What's your next play in the Lux Radio Theater, Mr. Keeley? A new picture from Universal International Studios, Barbara. A current hit all over the country. It's one of the freshest and most original comedies we've had in a long while. Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid. And the stars are straight from the picture cast. They're William Powell and Irene Hervey. You can see the possibilities when Bill tries to explain to his wife that he's uh, somewhat involved with the mermaid. It sounds like a wonderful part for Bill Powell. <laughs> Good night. Good, Good night, night and come back soon. Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents William Powell and Irene Hervey in Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Barbara Belgettis will soon be seen co-starring with James Mason in the Enterprise picture, Caught. Heard in our cast tonight where Hope Landon is Jenny... Edith Evanson as Sigrid, and Bill Johnstone as Papa. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid, starring William Powell and Irene Hervey. <laughs>